In this tutorial, you will learn how to integrate OpenGL with the WX Widgets framework. While we will keep things simple on the graphics front and draw just a triangle, we will use modern OpenGL core profile, which requires us to provide vertex and fragment shaders and set up buffers for the graphics pipeline. We will focus on the integration of the libraries, setting up the CMake list to handle the discovery and download of WX widgets and the OpenGL extension wrangler, and connecting the native UI to OpenGL code, allowing the user to change the properties of the objects. Be sure to stick till the end, where we discuss if OpenGL is still a good choice for modern 3D. So remember to like and subscribe, and let's dive in. Alright, let's jump right into the code. The main CPP file starts as usual. We declare the app and the frame classes. Next, our OpenGL canvas. That's the control that's going to do all the drawing. You can see the functions to initialize OpenGL and handles for OpenGL objects, including the vertex array and the vertex buffer. The onInit method is standard, as is the mineframe constructor, where we initialize the OpenGL canvas using default settings. The canvas constructor, in turn, initializes the OpenGL context. We want to use OpenGL version 3.3 and modern OpenGL score profile. The initialize OpenGL functions method, as the name suggests, initializes the pointers to OpenGL functions. This process is different for every platform, so we use the glue or OpenGL extension wrangler library to simplify it. We'll see in a moment how to easily incorporate glue in our build script using CMake. For now, let's stick to the C++ code. Next, we have the main OpenGL initialization function. Here we activate the OpenGL context using setCurrent, initialize glue, and output some graphics driver info. Then comes the shader code needed to draw our triangle and OpenGL calls to compile and link the shader program. Finally, we set up the buffers and send the vertex data to the GPU. In the onPaint method, we use the shader program, bind the vertex array, and draw the triangles using the current OpenGL context. You might wonder where we call our initialize OpenGL function and why we are not doing it in the canvas constructor. The constructor is a good place to do the initialization, which would work for Mac and Windows. Unfortunately, that's not the case on Linux when using WXGTK. The safe place to do this is the onSize handler, and that's why we call our method here. After running the code, we get our triangle and some debug info about the graphics card used. Before we move on to adding UI interactions, let's examine the CMake scripts to see how we set up our dependencies. We are using the external project configuration explained in my WX widgets with CMake video. This time, however, our project also depends on the glue library. The glue external project is set up just like WX widgets. We check if glue is installed in the system, and if it isn't, we download and build it. Note this scary looking definition in the CMake arcs list. This is CMake's generator expression used to define glue EGL on Linux. EGL is a part of OpenGL that facilitates the low level communication between GPU and Wayland or the X server. There is also an older technology named GLX, which only works for X. Here we opt for the modern variant. This definition has a helpful side effect. It makes glue link with the OpenGL libraries automatically. Thanks to this, we don't need to specify OpenGL libraries in the target link libraries call in the main project's build configuration. Without it, we would have to link these libraries for Linux explicitly. You should use this code if you choose a different solution for resolving OpenGL functions and extensions. Regardless of your choice, you must specify the GL component for WX widgets. OpenGL is available out of the box on Windows and Mac, but on Linux you need to install it. Here's how you can do that on Ubuntu. Let's add a simple interaction to our app. For example, letting the user change the triangle's color. We need the color dialog header, the color variable, and a button to display the dialog. We update the variable 
when the user confirms the dialog. Now we need to transfer that color data to the OpenGL code. We add a uniform variable to our fragment shader and set its value in onPaint. And that's it! The user can now influence the GPU drawing using the system's color dialog. Before I let you go, let's discuss the elephant in the room. Is OpenGL still the right choice for 3D graphics? The library fans claim that it absolutely is, but with the introduction of Vulkan and the development of native frameworks like Direct3D and Metal, the answer might not be that obvious. OpenGL is still very popular. This means there are a lot of tutorials out there to learn from. It's also much easier to grasp than its successor Vulkan. Having said that, it's deprecated on Mac, and that means it can be removed from the OS at any point now. Also, it offers fewer features and less control over the computations than Vulkan. So what should you choose? My advice is, for smaller projects, stick with OpenGL, but larger future-proof projects might benefit from using Vulkan from the start. And if you target just one operating system, consider learning a platform-specific framework. And that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.